Today, we will tell you why doing push-ups regularly is good for you and what happens to your body after doing push-ups for four weeks. What are the benefits of different kinds of push-ups? What muscle groups are being targeted? Stay till the end and you will see how your body can transform. Push-ups are one of the best forms of exercise that help you to build upper body strength. They are also a fast way of increasing your strength. This is because you use your body weight while performing basic push-ups. What's better is the fact that it is an all-natural exercise that doesn't require you to buy any special equipment. It can be performed anywhere. All you need is a flat surface and some space. This exercise works muscle groups such as the triceps, pecs, and shoulders. Here you are effectively bending your arms and lifting your entire body up and down. So, it functions as a workout for your entire upper body. They are also great for your lower back and your core. It does seem strange that your core gets engaged in an exercise that targets your upper body, but due to the nature of the exercise, the abdominal muscles get pulled in. This is in contrast with other upper body exercises like bicep curls that only target one muscle group. It is for this reason push-ups are classified as an efficient and effective exercise to help you improve your strength. Now how is this exercise helpful if you are the average person who doesn't have dreams of becoming a bodybuilder or an actor? Well, it makes you better at daily activities. Simple acts like lifting a bag of groceries, carrying a suitcase, or even carrying your baby in your arms becomes easier for you. So it's not only about showing off in front of your friends. Furthermore, don't be under the impression that push-ups are only meant to be performed by men. Anyone can perform push-ups and experience improvements in strength and stability. While performing tasks like lifting a suitcase, it is essential that our core remains stable. Now, push-ups are a great way to stabilize your core. That way, you don't slouch too much to one side and you are able to maintain proper posture. The other important thing is that when you perform core exercises, the target is usually the abdominal muscles. But there are multiple muscles that make up your core. The transverse abdominus is one of the deepest core muscles in our bodies, and it helps in supporting the spine. Similarly, the multifidus is a small muscle that also runs along the spine and plays a vital role in providing stability. So these muscles also require exercise and strengthening. And push-ups target these kinds of muscles. But why are we stressing so much about core strength and how push-ups strengthen your core? After all, push-ups are mainly meant for the upper body. They are there to help you get those killer biceps, right? This exercise makes your posture better. A good push-up engages two important muscles in our mid-back, the scapula and the rhomboids. Among ordinary people with desk jobs, these muscles are weak and underworked. Whereas our neck and shoulder muscles never catch a break, most of the time, when we are sitting at our desks, these muscles are engaged. It gives rise to the stereotypical slouched look that a lot of office goers have. A proper push-up exercises your back muscles and strengthens them. Our core is what gives us stability. It also has been called the powerhouse of the body. A stronger core is essentially a stronger you. Not to mention the stability that it gives your body. Another important benefit that is often overlooked is the link between push-ups and bone strength. Push-ups help to strengthen our bones since it is an exercise that involves using body weight. Now, we will look at how push-ups are more than just a simple exercise. They can also become a form of cardio. Whenever you do push-ups, you would have noticed that your heart starts to pump faster, you start to breathe more, and you break a sweat. As you perform more repetitions, the physical exertion remains consistent. Some people may go on until they reach 100 push-ups, while you may stop at 10. That is fine. By the time you reach 10 push-ups, you are performing a high-intensity workout. In 2019, a study was conducted involving over a 1,000 adult male firefighters. The researchers came to the conclusion that those who were able to perform push-ups were less likely to develop cardiovascular issues, like heart attacks and heart failure. Those who were able to perform 40 push-ups within half a minute had a significantly lower risk of heart disease compared to those who couldn't complete a push-up. Now, let's look at how we can perform a regular push-up. As we discussed before, you don't need anything apart from comfortable clothes. You can wear shoes if you want. Otherwise, you can perform push-ups with your bare feet also. You may also consider using a gym yoga mat if it makes you comfortable. However, ensure that you are able to get adequate grip. The first step is to kneel on the floor or exercise mat. Then bring your feet behind you. 
Next, you should bend forward so that you look like you are going to perform a plank. At this time, your palms should be firmly affixed to the floor, and your fingers should be facing forward. Make sure to keep around a shoulder's width of gap between your hands. Your shoulders and hands should be in line. Also, ensure that your feet are stuck together and your back is flat. Before starting the push up, engage your abdominal muscles. Now, lower your body towards the floor. A few common mistakes are letting your lower back sag downwards or letting your hips move upwards during this process. You should ensure that your torso remains rigid and your head and spine are aligned. Once you have lowered yourself, press upwards with your arms till you get back to your starting plank position. Now, all you need to do is repeat these motions a few more times. We are going to look at a few important things again. Do not let your lower back slouch. Your back should be straight. Your hips should not be lifted, but they should be in a straight line. If you are doing push ups for the first time, this may be a bit difficult for you. Since posture is an integral part of the exercise, there is a simpler alternative for beginners. Beginners can use their knees as support while going down. Since form plays such an important role in doing push ups, you can get a friend to keep watch and tell you when you are sagging. Now, once you start doing push ups regularly, your body gets used to it. Soon your stamina and strength will improve. At that stage, try to increase the number of push ups you do every day. Another thing you can do is try to learn how to perform other kinds of push ups. Doing these alternative forms will be a tremendous challenge for your body. First, we will look at the closed hands push up. Here, the main difference is in the distance between your arms. In a normal push up, you maintain at least a shoulder's width between your arms. For this push up, we keep our palms near the midline of our body. The first step is to get into the plank position. Then move your hands closer till both your index fingers are touching each other and your thumbs touch each other. So your index fingers and thumbs will create a diamond like shape. Then follow the steps to do a regular push up. Here, you need to take care to ensure that your elbows don't flare outwards when you are performing it. You should keep your elbows tucked in close to your sides. This form of push ups targets your triceps. The second type we will look at is the wide arm push up. Here, the focus is on engaging the chest and shoulder. To do this, we take a wider grip and keep the distance between our hands as more than a shoulder's width. Then you can go up and down like a normal push up. You can allow your elbows to bend a bit on your way down. The key thing to remember is that the wider the distance between your hands, the more significant the impact on your chest. The third type we will talk about is the staggered push up. Have you ever felt that one side of your body is stronger than the other? If you are right handed, it is often the case that your left hand may be a bit weaker than the right. In addition, the muscles will not be well defined. The staggered push up is the answer to these issues. Here, you will be placing more stress on one side to develop the muscles. You start off by assuming the plank position. Then one hand has to be higher than the other. So when you start going down, the bulk of the work will be done by one side. Then you complete the push up. You can consider switching sides after that. Another form of push up you can consider is the clap push up. Be warned, this is a complicated push up that is a test of strength and coordination. It will train you to get the explosive power that a lot of athletes have. You start off by executing a standard push up. As you come up, push yourself from the ground, clap, and then return to the plank position. So when you push yourself upwards, You need an explosive burst of power that will allow you to clap and then land. It is advisable to keep your elbows slightly bent while performing this kind of push up so that you can absorb the shock of landing. And then use this momentum to complete the next push up. In order to get used to this type of push up, consider doing it without clapping. Once you get used to this movement, you can incorporate clapping into the routine. This is one of the more complicated forms of push ups. There is also another advanced form of push up called the Superman push up, which is a variant of the clap push up. And that's all we have for you today. We have told you why you should do push ups regularly. What is your exercise routine? How do you stay fit? Let us know your thoughts in the comments.